Hey, hey, what's going on, everybody? Eric here with Driver Lineup, World's OK Steering Wheel Holder. Checking in with you guys for a long overdue video. Uh, boy, life has just been something else, you guys. Um, I don't even where, know where to begin. It's going to take a couple videos to uh, bring you all up to speed on everything that's been going on. Um, I do want to talk about the getting back to Prime and some of the things that I used to talk about and I want to get back into talking about. I'm going to get into uh, the new training pay model as best as I can today. I've seen a lot of questions about it. And uh, I've got now I don't have. Uh, well, first, let me throw this out there. If before we get into that, if you are a prime driver, a company driver, if you're already a company driver uh, with Prime Inc., or if you are a student getting ready to upgrade and you're looking for a good scenario to drive a truck, hit me up. Drop me a line down in the comments. I have a truck that has op that's opening up. Um, it'll be in Springfield and uh, definitely looking for a driver. So if you want to drive a truck for a private fleet, we have a driver lineup truck that's becoming available and it's it's a great opportunity for any company driver because you get all the benefits of running a lease truck um, but you get all the benefits of being a prime company driver as well so if that's you hit us up uh, you can drop a comment down below and jenna and or i will reach out to you on how to contact us now it's going to be a little bit difficult because and this is if I'm going to do this rant video here in a couple videos about AT&T. I'm like dumbfounded, you guys, dumbfounded. I've been with AT&T for like 25 years. My entire adult life has been with AT&T. I was with AT&T. I was actually with Singular and then AT&T bought Singular. <laughs> but to tell you how, just kind of give you a taste of that, I currently don't have a working phone. Um, long story behind that. <laughs> but I don't have phone service and that has been an interesting scenario. So I'm having to go to a, a copy of this that was sent to me by another prime driver uh, that I was able to get through Wi-Fi, thankfully, but Oh, I've got a whopper of a story for you guys through AT&T uh, about AT&T. I mean, it's just gonna, <laughs> it's something else. Uh, you're going to love it, but I don't have time for that in this video. Getting into it, so here's the deal. Um, so there's all these regulations coming down the pipes, uh, coming down the highway, so to speak, that are just really messing with the free markets. And I know some of you will disagree, whatever. I'm pretty libertarian, so uh, you know I've always maintained on this channel and since I've been with Prime that... Uh, it, it's a choice to go get in a truck. No one's forcing you to get into a truck. So I don't understand all this need for regulation and all this stuff to classify us this or that. I know exactly what I should be classified as, and that is an independent contractor. I don't want to be classified as an employee. But anyway, that's a whole other conversation. Um, because of all these regulations that are happening in California and uh, at the federal level, they're talking about a lot of this. A lot of these trucking companies, including Prime, their legal departments are really grappling with how to try to front load this, how, you know, how to get ahead of it a little bit so they're not caught up in any potential trip wires or anything like that. So uh, as a result of what's going on out there in the regulatory environment, Prime has changed up its pay model for students in training. And I've seen a lot of mixed reaction on this. I've seen uh, some very level-headed, logical reaction, and I've seen a lot of overblown reaction uh, with trainers who are like, you know what, F this, it's, too, it's pushing me too far. The 900 per week guarantee was already too much, and this is just gonna push it over the top, and it's just not worth it anymore. Now, I don't really think that training, the, the headache of training is worth it anyway. Um, but in my opinion and my take on this, and again, this is just my opinion and my take on it. Okay, yours could differ, fine. I'm just giving you my my take on it. I don't think it's much different at all. I, I, I don't really see 
any difference other than Prime covering its own ass. That's the only difference that I really, it's the only meaningful difference. So here's the message. Let me read it to you. There is a change to our BC seat pay package that will take effect in two weeks on payroll run 3323. BC seats B or and or C, uh, C seats will be paid a daily rate for each day that they are available for or dispatched. They will have an opportunity to earn more than a daily rate based on productivity. Uh, B seats will be paid a daily rate of 128 and 57 cents per day with any total productive hours over 10.7 paid at $12 per hour. C seats will be paid a daily rate of $114 per day with any total productive hours over 9.5 paid at $12 per hour. Key points to the new package. It is not based on miles ran or settled trips. Pay period for B and C seats only will be Wednesday through Tuesday. There is no change to the payroll cutoff for trips to be scanned in. We will use actual log hours from Omnitrax. Productive hours are a combination of driving slash on duty, not driving, plus four additional hours for each day. B and C seats must be either dispatched or available to be paid for each day. This will go into effect for payroll run 33 of 23. Current process pays B C seats based on trip scan settled by payroll cut off uh, payroll payroll cut off blah 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 blah. Okay, so basically the way I read this, if we're looking at that B seat at one hundred and twenty eight dollars per day, uh, they are available for dispatch. I think it comes out at um, I don't know. I'm just I don't have the math in front of me, but it's like eight hundred bucks a week, right, or something like that. Eight or nine. It's close eight fifty somewhere in there. So if you were paid that, uh, what was it? 10.7 hour, uh, yeah, 128 for 10.7 hours per day and you're working on duty on that 10.7 hours. Okay, so the, the complaint here by, that I see by a lot of trainers is that, well, now they can get $12 for all the additional. You know, they have a 14 hour uh, on duty work day, but potentially. So it could get $12 for all those extra hours. Well, the, the, if you're getting paid the day rate seven days, then you can't, it's very unlikely that you can work too many hours beyond that because you have a 70 hour clock, right? So you can't, it's not like you're all of a sudden, your student is all of a sudden going to have 30 hours paid extra at $12 per hour because there's, there's a finite number of hours they can drive. So I don't buy this, that $12 per hour language could end up getting the trainer just, you know, tanked into the hole and, and charged into oblivion because there's only a 70 hour work week uh, or a 70 hour clock. They have to take a 34 hour reset or not be available for dispatch. So the, it's not like that $12 per hour additional is going to get you in trouble. My reading of this is that, Really, Prime has figured out a way to keep the students' pay at roughly $900 per week, but change the language so that it's coming out to about $12 per hour. <laughs> so basically, Prime is saying, okay, if we're potentially going to run into these tripwires on the hourly pay, then we're going to make it so that the hourly pay is $12 per hour. And that's really what it comes down to. If you if you go do the math, if you're a prime trainer, go take that day rate for, let's say, six days because they're not really going to be able to you can't work, um, you know, you can't work 11 hours, seven days um, and they're not likely to work 11 hours, seven days. So let's just say six full days and then there's a 34 hour reset or however you want to look at that break that take that 128 day rate break it down get your full picture of it and then look at any additional possible hours they could work based on a 70 hour work week and it's not it's not going to end up being like $1500 it's basically going to end up being around $900 so i don't think prime has shifted anything to make the trainers potentially have to pay a lot more money I think all Prime has done is made it so that they can 
they can have a paper trail on what an hour is comp how much a, the compensation there is for an hour for a student who is a W two company employee of Prime for what they're paid. That's all. That's all this is doing is it's kind of documenting that hey, while you are a W two employee of Prime Inc. and while you are going through training, you are being paid twelve dollars per hour for all hours worked. That's basically what it comes down to. And the math, you know, it may be off by a little bit here and there, but they're basically trying to show that you're not working any hours that you're not compensated for. If you're driving or you're on duty, you're basically getting $12 per hour. So that's really what it kind of works out to. I, I tried, in fact, with this driver who sent it, in fact, it's, well, I don't want to say who it is because I'm not, I don't want to say who it is, but he and I went back and forth and we we're both concluded that we, we can't find any equation that screws the trainer in some substantial way. It basically all, all comes down to being about the same, you know, that we're already, the trainers are already paying students in the Prime Inc. TNT training program. So if you're wondering, if you're seeing stuff out there, you're hearing trainers complain about this and it's making you scared, I w honestly, I wouldn't be afraid of this. Like there's not, if you have a big mile week, it's not like they're getting paid a ton more. Um, they can't possibly work too many more hours than what that 128 is covering because of the 70 hour clock. So there's not really a scenario where the student is going to be able to go up, you know, all of a sudden be making $1,500 or $2,000 per week on the new pay scale. Again, all this really does is give Prime a way to explain if there was any challenge or if anyone ever got into some, you know, a legal analysis of this. Prime is basically setting itself up to say, look, you're basically compensated about $12 for every hour that you're driving or you're on duty that you work. You know, I mean, that that's basically what it comes down to. So, and I, then that's probably just a result of the, um, of the regulatory environment right now is that they're trying to cover their own ass and create a paper trail, uh, for this whole process. So that's my take on it. Um, now for any student or anyone who's not at prime, a lot of you prime haters, and you're looking at this saying, oh, that's ridiculous. $12 an hour. You can't survive on that in this day and time. With inflation and everything out of control, yeah, twelve dollars an hour is rough. But again, this is to this is training. Okay, this is a phase where you are a student learning a trade, uh, learning a profession. So I think it's amazing pay to go through a training course. I mean, in college or anything else where you go through uh, a process of learning that trade, you you have to pay for it right? In most other scenarios. So the fact that you're actually getting the equivalent of about $12 per hour in Prime's training program, I think is excellent for, for students. I don't think there's any room to be complaining about that and saying that it's not enough. It's way more, substantially more than I was paid when I was a student just three and a half, four years ago. Um, so, you know, I, I don't, I just don't see any room for legitimate complaint on any side of the argument. I, students are still, I think, very compensated very well. Uh, trainers are protected from any sort of skyrocketing cost because, again, there's a 70-hour clock that limits what the student can make that week. So I don't know. I, you know, Could there be a little bit of change in what the compensation is? I can see that. Is it reason for concern? No, I can't see that. Um, that said, I still don't think it's worth it to train. My hat is off to those of you who train. I, I think that is just hardcore and um, I did it and I, I, I'm not a huge fan of it. Um, so, but you know, getting back to the compensation side, I don't see a lot of, don't see a lot of cons room for concern there. Maybe you disagree. Let me know. Tell me, Eric, you're stupid. You're an idiot. You don't get it. I don't, leave me whatever kind of comment. Eric, you're right. It doesn't really change a whole lot. Whatever you want to say, leave a comment down below. I hope to get back to making videos. Again, I don't even have cell service right now. Um, 
So it's quite a challenge in life to function <laughs> without, like if you send a text to my phone, uh, it ain't coming through. And so, but I've got a whopper of a video coming up for you guys. Other videos are coming as well. Thank you all so much. Be safe, make great decisions, and as always, drive to thrive. I'll talk to you soon.